God is the creator of all evil. Isaiah 45, 7, former of light and creator of darkness, maker of good and creator of evil. I, Yahweh Elohim, made all these things. Proverbs 16, 4, Yahweh has made everything for its own permanent end, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Lamentations 3, 38, do not both the evil and the good come forth from the mouth of the supreme. Isaiah 54, 16, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. Asmos 3, 6, Would a trumpet be blown in a city, and the people not tremble? Would there come to be evil in a city, and Yahweh have not done it? Job 2, 10, Yet he said to her, Like the speech, some... Decadent. Decadent woman, are you speaking indeed? Should we receive good from the one Elohim, and should we not receive evil? And all this Job did not sin with his lips. God made Satan, also known as the devil, the dragon, the serpent, evil from the start. From the moment God made him, Satan was evil and wicked and full of darkness. He was created to destroy, to kill, and to steal. He was created to be the perfect adversary to man. The devil can only do what God commands him to do. Oh, he was also created to lead man astray also. I forgot to add that. My, my bad. And he answers. All right, we'll have to start over there. The devil can only do what God commands him to do. And he answers directly to God and God uses Satan for his purpose. And God uses all his purposes for the good of all. Satan was ma made to provide contrast to God's light, love, mercy, and grace, and all that he is. No one can know good without evil. No one can know light without darkness. That is why God created Satan to provide contrast for good by displaying evil and all that is bad. Satan is the opposite of God in nature and character, not in power. God is all powerful and he commands Satan and Satan can't do anything of his own accord. He is subjected to God Almighty and the will of God Almighty. He is not some free agent like Christianity teaches and able to do whatever he pleases. He can only do what God tells him he can do, nothing more or less. He's, he is very limited in power and the power he has given comes directly comes directly from God himself. God will eventually save Satan and all evil celestial beings and every member of his creations, including all of mankind. After all, God is building himself a family from every creature and every being he has made. He is merciful, full of love and grace, and is just in all that he does. Father God Almighty will save Satan after he has accomplished his mission and fulfilled his role as the adversary. Philippians 2, 10 through 11, that in the name of Jesus, every knee should be bound, celestial and terrestrial and subterranean, and every tongue should be acclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord, for the glory of God the Father. Colossians 1, 20, and through him to reconcile all to him, to him, making peace through the blood of his cross, through him, whether those on the earth, or those in the heavens. Verses to show God commands Satan, and Satan can't do anything on his own volition. All his power comes direct, directly from God, and Satan works for God. Job 1.6 There was a day when the sons of Elohim would come to station themselves before Yahweh, and Satan came also in their midst. Job 1.7 Yahweh said to Satan, From where are you coming? Then Satan answered Yahweh and said, From going to and from in the earth and from walking about in it. Job 1.8 So Yahweh said to Satan, Have you set your heart on my servant Job? From there is no one like him on the earth. A man flawless and upright, fearing Elohim and withdrawing from evil. 
Job 1 9. Then Satan answered Yahweh and said, Does Job fear Elohim gratuitously? Job 1 12. Hence Yahweh said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your hand, but you must not put forth your hand upon himself. Then Satan went forth from Yahweh's presence. Job 2, 1 through 7. The day came around again when the sons of Elohim came to station themselves before Yahweh, and Satan came also in their midst to station them to station himself before Yahweh. Yahweh said to Satan, From where are you coming? Then Satan answered Yahweh and said, From going to and from in the earth, and from walking about in it. So Yahweh said to Satan, Have you set your heart against my servant Job, for there is none like him on the earth, a man flawless and upright, fearing Elohim and withdrawing from evil, and he is still is holding fast to his integrity, though you would incite me against him to swallow him up gratuitously. Then Satan answered Yahweh and said, Skin in behalf of skin, for all that a man has would he give in behalf of his soul. How bit? How bit? Now, put forth your hand and touch his bone and his flesh, and he shall assuredly, 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 scorn you to your face. Hence, Yahweh said to Satan, "Behold him in your hand, yea, but keep his soul alive." From that, we can conclude that Satan answers directly to God and reports directly to God and can't do anything of his own volition. It also shows God is completely sovereign over all his creations. Job 26, 13, by his spirit he hath garnished the heavens, his hand hath formed the crooked serpent. Job 26, 13, by his spirit the heavens were made, seemingly his hand travailed with the fugitive, fugitive serpent. First John 3, 8, the one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from his beginning. A lot of tra translations put the, but it should be his beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. John 8, 44, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from, a lot of translations use the, but again, it's his beginning. Not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his own native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Romans 9, 14 through 23, what then shall we be declaring not that there is injustice with God, may it not be coming to that. For to Moses he is saying, I shall be merciful to whoever, to whomever I may be merciful, and I shall be pitying whoever I may be pitying. Consequently, then, it is not of him who is willing, nor of him who is racing, but of God. The merciful for the scripture is saying to Pharaoh that for this selfsame thing I rouse you up, so that I should be displaying in you my power, so and so that my name should be published in the entire earth. Consequently, then, to whom he will, he is merciful. Yet whom he will, he is hardening. You will be protesting to me, then. Why, then, is he still blaming? For who has withstood his intention, O oh man? Who are you, to be sure, who are answering again to God? That which is molded will not protest to the molder. Why did you make me thus? Or has not the potter the right over the clay? Out of the same needing to make one vessel indeed for honor, and yet one for dishonor. Now if God, wanting to display his indignation and to make his powerful doings known, carries with much patience the vessel of indignation, adapted for destruction, it is that he should also be making known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, 
which he makes ready before for glory. Isaiah 55, 8-11 For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah 46, 9 through 10, declaring the end from the beginning, from ancient times of things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Love, grace, love, grace, and peace to everyone. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful night, and God bless you all. And thank God for all my brothers and sisters in the body of Christ.